What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Wanted to give you a quick update and review of my DIY kayak trolling motor install. It's lightweight, inexpensive, no holes have to be drilled. Hopefully it'll help you guys out. Let's get into it. We'll work around from bow to stern here. The state of Texas requires you to register your vessel if you're motorized, even electric trolling motors. Some folks may think that's silly, uh, but it's a tool to locate you if you fall overboard and it will help save lives. I've personally been a part of rescues where that was the case. Working on back, this is a PVC electric switch box. I ran wires through here, through the potentiometer switch removed from the head unit, and it's all waterproofed and sealed with silicone. Five positions forward, three positions reverse. As a reference, this is the head unit that came off. And here's the potentiometer. This is actually off of another trolling motor. This is a one inch diameter hole feeding the wires through, all sealed off and waterproofed. Coming back to one inch diameter conduit. Up here where I sit and kind of ding around more, this is a little more protective. This stuff's actually very, very hard and dense. Protects the wiring running through a little bit better. Moving back from that, we've got wire loom that feeds into that one inch conduit tubing. It's a little more pliable and easy to manipulate, getting it on and off the kayak, and kind of moving it out of the way for the crate. So I went with that versus the one inch tube all the way. I kind of cut it short. I found that that helps with uh, maneuvering the cabling. Moving back from there, we have our power cables that come up to our 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium ion battery. This battery sits down strapped into a crate it holds my fishing tackle, my rod holders, and all that good stuff. I can't tell you exactly how long this battery will last, but it lasts a very long time. I've ran it for 12 hours, pretty continuous on max speeds, fishing tournaments, exploring new areas, and it's never died on me. I've taken it on multi-day trips without charging it. It's a solid battery. Moving on back, here's the trolling motor. Here's the mount. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the trolling motor off so we can talk about the mount. It's very simple to remove. Just a couple quick cams. Bam. So I cut this mount out of quarter inch aluminum plate and use the existing power pole screws to put hardware in to hold it down. Underneath here, it's kind of hard to see, but I have this really stiff marine mat. And what that does is it helps protect the aluminum on the plastic surface. Uh, it gets locked down pretty well, so there really wouldn't be a whole lot of rubbing around, but that's just one more preventative measure to aid in the longevity of this without damaging the kayak. And then on the back here, I have recessed bolts that go into a thick hardwood. Uh, it really lets those cams lock into that wood. I've used this for a year there's almost no indentation in here. Little use on the aluminum, but really no corrosion, no damage. It's a pretty solid little mount. You might notice that these mounting holes aren't quite perfect. That's not due to me misdrilling the mount. I've had to use this mount on a couple different Hobie Outbacks in the last year and a half or so. And the existing power pole insertions where the molds are uh, aren't quite perfect. There's some variations from mold to mold. So when I put this on the new Outback hole, I had to re-drill slightly to account for that. All right, we'll pop the trolling motor back on and we'll go over the details on that. All right, when I put it on, I look down on these recessed bolt areas and I try to get it as center as possible. And then evenly tighten the cams. So this is the Minn Kota 30 pound thrust Endura trolling motor. It's advertised at 12 pounds, but once you chop the head off and remove part of the shaft and the control column and all that, it ends up coming in at 10 and a half pounds. So very light setup. I have tried the 45 pound thrust model, but it has a larger housing down here, which creates more of a drag profile and reduces your speed. You get diminishing returns. So for the weight of this, I found that you really get the best value out of your speeds. I'm getting about four to 4.5 miles an hour depending on current. 
I can also paddle with it using the pedal drive and I get about six if I really get on it. So pretty good speeds, pretty consistent. One thing that's a little bit different than the last iteration is the last one I had the electrical conduit box on top. Here I'm using a 90 degree PVC elbow and I have a set bolt going through that. And it's also silicon sealed on the bottom and around the wiring. The wiring has an immense amount of electrical tape around it too. I had to squeeze it to get it in there. So there should be zero water intrusion in here. Like I said, I went with the wire loom instead of the one inch conduit coming out. It gives it a little more pliability and maneuverability just so I can get around the crate and take it on and off easier. So the same as before, I use it strictly for propulsion. I haven't added any steering. The rudder on this kayak is more than sufficient to turn it. Work back around over here to the switch box and I'll show you how that works. So here's our five position forward switch. You see it kicks on. And then we'll just go through the different speeds. Not that you can really pick it up on camera, but that's max speed. And she really gets moving. And I had marks on here before that indicated where I was, but I've used it so much now. I just It's kind of a feel thing. I know where it is. Moving back around here, I'll show you one more addition that I've made that I find to be extremely useful in South Texas, being that the water depths are so shallow. We have dual looped 550 cord attached to a heavy duty zip tie. We're gonna go ahead and clip our raising lowering lanyard on. Come back. And we have this attached to a Hobie pull handle I took off of another kayak I had. So back here on our H-rail, I have an accessory H-rail mount, drilled two holes in it, and mounted an open face cleat that'll lock this line in when you raise and lower it. It's relatively low profile. You can see it doesn't stick up all that much at all. It's a very clean install. And so what I do is sitting in the seat, I can do kind of a half turn, reach back and grab this. So to pull it up, we just give it a little pull lock it in that cleat and then we can hit some shallow areas move around we're ready to drop it back down Boom. just lower it one other small detail I made on this pull lanyard is the addition of a float I just didn't want to accidentally drop this overboard and it go back and foul the prop as it's spinning I'll likely never trying to be raising and lowering it while the prop is moving and I'll probably never drop this in the first place, but that's one fail safe just to keep anything bad from happening out on the water. So when I'm done for the day and back at the ramp, I just reverse the process. I pop the clip off and I made these lanyards to keep that clip actuated so that this can kick up. That way it won't damage the kayak if I do hit something going really fast. But they're just Velcro straps I made that keep that clip locked in. And I use these to lock down the wiring whenever I'm done taking it off the battery. So I lift it up real quick. I have locked it in, ready to travel. We'll go ahead and drop it back down and give it one more quick overview. Very low profile setup, very inexpensive, no holes to drill, nothing proprietary. Everything on here can be replaced relatively inexpensively and it's just a pretty solid system for my needs one of the things i enjoy most about running this setup is the ability to focus on other aspects during transit such as rigging tackle checking weather and even eating another big plus for me is the ability to place the motor on a low power setting stand up and troll slowly to cover water search for fish and sight cast there's a significant perspective to be gained from being six feet off the water versus two feet and be self-propelled. A quick side note, if you end up going the lithium ion battery route, you'll have to have a lithium ion battery charger. 
one that has this option. A normal lead acid battery charger isn't compatible with lithium. Just something to keep in mind. Go ahead and pop this guy back off. That's pretty much the system in a nutshell, guys. Very inexpensive, very reliable. I've been using this Trolla motor in this configuration for the better part of a year now, no issues at all. If anything does break though, it's easy to get replacement parts. They're inexpensive. Nothing's proprietary about this. Again, no holes to drill in the kayak. Everything's utilizing what was already there for mounting options. But yeah, you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.